Prime Minister Modi reaching out to long-time ally Nepal. The Prime Minister visited the birthplace of Buddha in Lumbini and stressed how India shares this deep religious and cultural ties with Nepal. The Prime Minister's visit comes at a time when Beijing is attempting to further its foothold in the Himalayan Kingdom. Take a look at what happened. A power-packed day-long visit to Nepal. From Buddha to cultural heritage to deepening ties. India's neighborhood's first policy on display. On the occasion of Buddha Purnima, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Nepal on Monday. He offered prayers at the sacred Maya Devi temple in Lumbini, one of the holiest places of Buddhism as Lord Buddha was born there. While Lumbini was Prince Siddhartha's Janmabhumi, India was his Karmabhumi, where he became Buddha, the enlightened one. Prime Minister stressed the shared spiritual and cultural ties that bind the two countries. Buddha, मानवता के सामूहिक बोध का अवतरण है। बुद्ध बोध भी है और बुद्ध शोध भी है। बुद्ध विचार भी है और बुद्ध संस्कार भी है। India and Nepal agreed in principle to establish sister city relations between Lumbini and Kushinagar in Uttar Pradesh, where Buddha took his last breath. Prime Minister Modi also held bilateral talks with Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deva. The two countries signed six MOUs on expanding cooperation in areas such as hydropower, development and connectivity. Our और सोनौली में इंटीग्रेटेड चेकपोस्ट बनाने जैसे फैसले भी लिए हैं इसका काम भी शुरू हो गया ये इस पोस्ट बनने के बाद बॉर्डर पर लोगों के आवागमन के लिए सुविधा बढ़ेगी इससे व्यापार और जरूरी चीजों के ट्रांसपोर्टेशन को भी गति मिलेगी भारत और नेपाल दोनों ही देशों के बीच मिलकर के काम करने के लिए Nepal Prime Minister Deuba hosted a lunch in honor of Prime Minister Modi and the members of the Indian delegation following the bilateral talks. It was Prime Minister Modi's fifth visit to Nepal since he took over office in 2014. Despite the close linguistic, religious and cultural ties at the people-to-people -people level between India and Nepal, Kathmandu at times has been warming up to China. Prime Minister Modi's visit is an outreach to a long-time ally. Bureau Report, India Today. So can we say that Nepal is still India's most trusted neighbor? How do you counter China's bid in particular to influence Nepal? Joining me now is uh, Kanakmani Dixit, editor of Himal and one of Nepal's most uh, distinguished, credible journalists. Joining me also, Rakesh Sood, former Indian ambassador to Nepal. Appreciate both of you joining us. Kanak Mani Dixit, this visit, the fifth visit of the Indian Prime Minister, but came at a time when there is an urgent need to reset India-Nepal ties after all that has happened in the last couple of years. Do you believe that the Prime Minister's visit goes a long way to doing that? The trip is uh, very important, as all trips are bilateral, uh, between neighbors, Razdeep, and the issues that have cropped up between Nepal and India go a bit further back than two years. It goes back to the blockade of 2015, and it goes also back to the fact that two years ago, a huge border problem has arisen between Nepal and India. So this trip was important uh, as a uh, visit of a prime minister uh, to another country, Indian Prime Minister in Nepal. However, I believe uh, from the readouts that I have seen, the crucial issues, which we can come into later if there is time, uh, that have risen up like a canker between Nepal and India, which cannot be wished away. They can be good optics, optics for both Prime Ministers on a visit like this, after all, to the birthplace of Lord Buddha, mm -hmm. a six-hour trip by the Prime Minister of India, good on optics, but I do believe that beyond 
making sure that the two prime ministers have established a camaraderie meeting over three times during the last seven, eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, all that is good, but will they even uh, in private get to the issues that really like, like are a problem one? between the two countries? Which according to you, is it the territorial dispute, which is according to you the primary sticking point? Absolutely. Uh, it has come up. Uh, it, the, the triangle northwest of Nepal, which is claimed by Nepal, uh, India is building a road up to the pass and this is acknowledged as a bilateral issue. There has to be discussions and talk, but this is completely ignored. Uh, whereas I can tell you, I can assure you that the, the growth of Nepal-India relationship now uh, re requires resolving this issue, this issue and this does not mean resolving it in on the side of any one side. Have an open talks. Let be me, open and ready for talks. But let me the take Nepal that. government itself doesn't seem to be too um, his, uh, you know, in a rush to propose that this issue be tackled. But I do believe uh, countries as close as Nepal and India cannot let this canker remain. Let me take that to Rakesh Sood. Beyond the optics, do you believe that there are real issues between India and Nepal that remain unresolved? The, the territorial dispute being one of them, plus the growing China presence, especially economically in Nepal? Well, yes, Rajdeep. Uh, there are issues that need to be resolved between India and Nepal because, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Nepali nationalism mm -hmm. most often than not takes the form of anti Indianism. And anti Indianism is then used as a stick to beat India. I've seen this again and again. Even innocent statements are often taken out of context. Indian films at times, mm -hmm. there was a question that was raised in one of the Indian films. Uh, maybe unless you are a film buff, you won't even remember it called Chandni Chalk to China. Mm -hmm. And there, there was this comment about Buddha was born in India and cinema halls in Nepal were burnt because they thought that India was claiming Lumbini. Now, the fact that this film made by some Bollywood, uh, made in Bollywood, mm -hmm. had this comment, need not have given rise to these kind of resentments. But yes, what happens is that very often, as I said, Nepali nationalism takes the form of anti-Indianism. So, Insofar as uh, so how, so how do you about the boundary is concerned, yes, go ahead. I'm afraid Please officials ahead. are going to be unable to mm -hmm. talk about it because this is something that has been a lasting legacy of the Oli government. The Oli government made it a constitutional amendment, adopted it, and has put it in the flag of Nepal. So therefore, how is a Nepali foreign secretary supposed to negotiate with an Indian foreign secretary about the territorial boundary of his country, which has been adopted by parliament? I mean, it just beats imagination. Okay. So I'm afraid this is something that is going to require political resolution and not official talks. So, uh, you know, in a way, you're, you're, you're pointing out to the difficulties that lie, but do the optics work? The, you know, Mr. Modi has gone there for the fifth what time in the last seven years. Are optics enough? Or is that a limitation, in a way, of a very personalized style of diplomacy? Well, you see, Prime Minister Modi made two visits in 2014. His first visit was an enormously successful visit. His second visit was for the SARC summit. Mm -hmm. Yes. After that, we had a lot of downturns in the India relationship with Nepal. We had the 2015 constitution adoption. After that, there was what Nepal accused India of a blockade. And then there was a slowdown in the relationship. Mm -hmm. After that, the visits took place in 2018. So in 2018, Prime Minister Modi made a bilateral visit after K.P. Oli had visited India earlier. And then he visited again a couple of months later for a BIMSTEC summit meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Then thereafter has been this Kalapani, you know, the territorial dispute at the Lipu Lake Pass and Kalapani and all that, where uh, Nepal introduced new maps after India introduced new maps. And then Nepal proceeded to make that into a constitutional amendment and change its own territorial boundaries and maps. So therefore, um, so optics this that... now is a new beginning. Prime Minister Modi has gone to Lumbini. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 2014, in his very first visit, he had said that he would like to visit Muktinath, which is a Vishnu temple, Janakpur, obviously Sita's birthplace, and uh, Lumbini. Now, he, is, he did the first two that I mentioned in uh, 2018. He wasn't able to do Lumbini. So I think he has completed his pilgrimage part of it. Whether we are going to see concrete movements towards issues like the territorial issue or another uh, difficult issue, namely the 1950 Peace and Friendship Treaty between in India and Nepal, mm -hmm. uh, which also is seen as a bit of a wrinkle in the relationship, whether these can be resolved and how these can be resolved are going to be issues that we will have to look for let me leave in it, times to come. Let me leave it there. Clearly the limitations of optics. I wish we had more time. Unfortunately, we spent more time today celebrating India's victory uh, in, in, in the Thomas Cup. So Kanakmani Dikshit, Rakesh Sood, uh, hopefully we can have a more extended discussion on not just Nepal but issues concerning South Asia in the days ahead. I appreciate though both of you joining us.